I guess we've got to take the rough with a smooth in terms of transfers. We're happy enough to let players come in and we're quite close to capacity in terms of squad numbers. I guess we're going to have to accept that some players have got to leave. Uh, but in one instance, Craig Dawson, I feel, feel we had sort of the makings of a cult hero on our hands, much loved by everybody, certainly. And I certainly think the same with uh, Pablo Fornell, has been linked with a move to Barcelona. And now I certainly believe one of these two rumours is more realistic than the other, and that is that Craig Dawson is leaving. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss uh, Fornells later on. Let's start with Craig Dawson. Now, the rumour is that there's a lot of interest from, I think, Aston Villa, from Wolves, and uh, a couple of other clubs, even Leicester, may be rumoured to be interested with uh, Fofana going to Chelsea. So, uh, it's it's a... It's not a transfer that I would have expected to happen, but some other information has come to light, and that is that he commutes from his home. I, I can't remember. I've up north or in the Midlands, somewhere, somewhere that's not particularly close to London. Put it that way. He commutes for training each and every day, and for the matches, and that can't be good. And I've often said on this channel, as you'll know, I'm surprised you don't hear more of that from footballers who don't want to uproot root their families, who don't want to pull their kids out of school. Changing your, your kids' schools every, every time you move club has got to be really disruptive and, and not particularly good for your children's education. So I, I sort of get it. I'm surprised more people don't do that. That being said, I guess it really takes its toll in terms of the travel because I guess one of the benefits of being a footballer is that, you know, you're sort of not working 12-hour days. Oh, you get, get to spend a lot of time with your family. And if basically each day Dawson's spending five, six hours travelling, he's certainly not doing that. Uh, he's been a wonderful player for us and I feel better than any anyone could have expected him to be. I remember when it was announced that he was joining uh, initially on loan. Everybody's really, really underwhelmed. But actually, he was really good. And it's actually, I think, pound for pound in terms of outlay, which was initially a loan and then whatever, two and a half, three million, depending on which newspaper you read, has been a, a really valuable signing for us. And has, has been man of the match, has been a match winner, a leader. I think a lot of people were talking about losing Mark Noble, about... Uh, losing some of the bigger characters, maybe Alan Irvine as well. David Martin's been spoken about, of course, Stuart Pearce. Um, but I don't think you can discount in terms of leadership Craig Dawson not being in the team, a quiet leader, unassuming leader, somebody who would lead by example uh, very much so and you know, and pay, play through the pain barrier. I mean, literally played through injury last season through an injured ankle and a broken nose. He just carried on playing. Uh, a real warrior. I'll be... I'll be disappointed to see him go, but I sort of get it. And it normally, when a player leaves your club, um, if they do so under good terms, it's because they've been a long, good servant. I think uh, he's sort of one of those rarities who haven't played very long for West Ham, but he would be welcome back. He, you know, you won't find Craig Dawson getting booed when he returns. I think everybody gets it and everybody understands. Uh, we've been linked with a few journeymen as his replacement. Nobody really of note, and I don't think we're looking to spend any money on them, and sort of rightly so, really, because a couple of loans or, or a one centre-back as loan would be, would be absolutely fine. I think it would be hard to buy somebody and convince them that there was a place for them at West Ham. There just isn't. You know, let's be fair, when a Gerd gets back, he's going to be pushing for first-team inclusion. Uh, Kayra gets seems to get better with each game. Zuma is... You know, had a, had a great game in his last game, actually. And he's clearly got a few injury niggles. But when he gets them sorted, he's going to be fighting for first team place. Plus, you've got Ogbonna coming back fitness. So you sort of get it, really, don't you? And then, of course, we've got a couple of fullbacks in Ben Johnson and in Aaron Cresswell, as well as Declan Rice, who can fill in at centre-back. So I think it's hard to try and recruit another centre-back and say there's going to be a space for them long-term at West Ham. There really isn't. So maybe just somebody who can cover um, maybe Zuma's injury, Ogbonna coming back and a Gerd's injury until the end of the season or, or whatever for six months is probably the right thing to do. But, you know, as I say, wish Craig Dawson really well. David Moyes is quite cryptic about it. Let me just read this to you. Uh, Craig Dawson, this is Moyes in his press conference talking about Craig Dawson. He said, I've spoken to him many times. I speak to him all the time. I'm communicating with him right now. Uh, you need, I guess that right now during the press conference, uh, he said, you need to take it as that. If there's an answer in two days' time, I can give you the reasons behind him. That's quite specific. There's a reason. Uh, two days, obviously, he's talking about the end of the transfer window. Uh, he said, he was basically asked if 
he was looking for a replacement for him as cover, and he said, possibly, yeah, it'd be remiss of me if I wasn't. Uh, so, so there you go. One thing we do know is David Moyes likes a, a certain amount of centre halves. He likes lots of them, and, and I get it. I understand it. And well, you know what? A massive, massive shame. I think in many respects, I was actually looking forward to him coming back. I tell you what, I think if he'd have been available and fit for our first three games, we wouldn't have found ourselves losing um, all three of them. I'm pretty sure of that. Um, and whoever, sorry, the one final thing, whoever he goes to, we'll, we'll be getting a really good committed player and I wouldn't be surprised if he plays against us and scores against us. It's going to be a like pain in the bum, isn't it? Anyway, um, Pablo Fornells, I don't know if you've read the reports. I'm going to get accused of making this up. I promise you I haven't. Uh, apparently, the, the story goes that Barcelona are looking to bid £30 million for Pablo Fornells. be interesting. What, what would you do? Seriously, what would you do? £30 million for Pablo Fornells. Um, what's his worth to West Ham United? Personally, I wouldn't sell him. And I don't expect him to feature that much as... If you if you wrote down your first choice starting eleven now, he probably wouldn't be in it. But I do think he's going to play an awful lot. I also do think, going back to the what I just said about the lack of leaders in there um, and characters maybe in the team, so if you're losing Dawson... Uh, I wouldn't be keen to lose four now. He's going to be one. He's very, very resili resilient. He's a character. And I think it's really important that we... C I just think it's important we don't sell anybody else, particularly somebody that plays regularly in the first-team squad. They don't have to be a first-teamer as much as... You know, it doesn't have to be Declan Rice, for instance, but these characters are important and um, you know if we're going to lose Dawson then I think it's really important that we don't lose four nails that being said I did find the um, report hard to believe also you know Barcelona Barcelona like Everton haven't they it's another club that apparently has got no money but they keep spending money and, and buying players uh, they're certainly not going to get their De Jong money are they um, which they've been they've almost done everything they possibly could to get rid of that player but uh, anyway that's not happening um, I mentioned yesterday that Ross Barkley wouldn't be of interest to David Moyes. David Moyes actually openly spoke about Ross Barkley in his press conference. Um, okay, he he sort of left the door open, but I, I would be I would be surprised. I would be really really surprised if we. I think he's just possibly saying nice things. I'd be absolutely amazed. I don't see an awful lot of evidence to support Moyes bringing in uh, Ross Barkley. Just can't see it. But I do think there are another couple. Actually, I've got to say, I think it's this probably. I must be honest with you. I don't always look forward to Hammers Chats transfer deadline day shows because I often think, you know, there's not an awful lot going to happen. You know, we, we often find ourselves sat there <laughs> hoping something will happen, nothing happens, and, you know, you've got to find, you know, three, four, five hours, um, you know, to find something to say, and particularly when you've already, you know, been talking about all the transfers individually for the week. However, I'm looking forward to this one. I think something's going to happen. I really do. Now, it might not be on transfer deadline day. It might be the day before, but I think we're going to look to do a couple of things. Um, Longello has gone out uh, to loan uh, Birmingham, I believe. I think that's really important. Um, and I'm excited to see how he'll he'll do out there. Um, I think it's something we've not been particularly good at, which is getting players out to championship clubs. You see these players, we buy these players sometimes, being like Jared Bowen or, or look at Brennan Johnson last season. These players who go, uh, who are in the championship and they really shine. They really, um, they really step up a level. And, and he's got a real chance, Longello. And I, I think it will, it will do one or two, well, one or three things. It'll either fail um, or it will succeed. And if he succeeds, the two things that could happen there is that, you know, he'll either we'll either get a transfer fee for him or he'll play so well that David Moyes might think, hello, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to start to try and uh, utilise this guy and start using him in the team. The other guy that's gone off is um, Oco Flex. He's gone to Swansea. Again, a, a, not a bad thing at all. Um, I was actually, I thought it was very, very fleeting, but uh, he's, he's little cameo at the end of the Viborg game. Again, I, I, I sort of quite enjoyed. It was hardly saw anything of him at all, but I did say I thought he carried the ball uh, very well. And I think it'd be good for him. I'd be very interested to see if either one of those two can be the stars, um, one of the stars of the championship. Because, like, like I just said, if you get somebody like that who really shines in the championship, then other clubs play sort of 15, 20 million pound and, you know, for these players. And that could make um, a bit of a difference for us. It's quite clear that neither was going to get a chance in our first team squad this season. Uh, I, I know, having said that, I've just contradicted myself with Vibor, but that happened before um, we brought in Pekata and before we, well, as I say, I think one or two more. 
that bench is packed out. That bench is full. Um, be interesting to see what happens with Connor Coventry. Actually, sort of undecided um, on that. We touched on it in our in our mug of tea. Um, look, myself and Geo did yesterday. Um, but squad places are at a premium, and there's just no way with that sort of packed out bench that David Moyes has got now that, given the option, he's going to choose one of those young players off the bench. It basically, here's the point: if you start Skamaka, he knows he's got an an agitated. Um, Mikel Antonio on the bench. So when Skamaka comes off after 60 minutes, it's going to be Antonio he turns to just try and keep Antonio sweet. Give it, Antonio wants a chance to get that first team shirt back to score a goal. If he turns around and puts Oco Flex on or, or De Becco or, or someone like that, it's just it's just going to it's just going to make more problems for himself. Um, big reaction to the video yesterday about Harrison Ashby. A couple of people said I made it up. I really didn't make it up. I promise, I really didn't. It's it's a rumor that's out there. Um, <laughs> I would understand if it would say I made the four hours one up, but I really didn't, I promise you. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, the Ashby one, I, I totally understand the, the backlash and the disappointment. He does look to be a player with real promise and, and our next, um, I think our next most promising player to come through the academy. And, and I expected him to be someone to feature on the bench regularly. It only takes one injury one injury to one defender, you know, and you know, whatever, an injury to Johnson or injury to Sufau and Johnson plays, then, you know, he's the right back on there. I understand Kaira can can play at right back, but what if, like, now you've got a good and Dog Bonner injured, you know, Kaira's being used as a centre back. You don't really want him there as right back cover, do you? So, um, yeah, I'd be really, really disappointed, but I just wanted to sort of make the point. I think there was a lot of people saying, why are we choosing to sell him? Uh, and maybe, maybe, I, maybe I didn't describe it properly. The rumour is that we're not we're looking to sell him. The rumour, I think West Ham want to keep him. That's the point. We're trying to get him to sign a new deal. West Ham want to keep him. Um, it's just that Newcastle wants him. And I don't think they're the only ones, as I mentioned yesterday as well. So that's the thing. And maybe, just maybe, the, the player wants, um, wants more guarantees of first-team football. What, this is what I don't fully understand about that, though. If what he wants is first in football, is he really going to get it at Newcastle? Um, I mean, that, that'd be that'd be really interesting to see. Wouldn't it? I mean, I, I would be would be disappointed. I think the best thing for all concerns, if I had if it, if I had my ideal resolution to all of this, would be that he signs a new deal before it gets to the real nitty gritty. Um, but basically, basically, maybe he does half the season on loan somewhere this season and half the season with us just for him to get some experience elsewhere because we've just spoken about Longello, just spoken about Ockerflex. I really do believe that if we were to give Ashby half a season in the championship, he really it'd be almost be the, the next Matty Cash, if you know what I mean. It'd be a, a you know, really, really stand out um from there. Anyway, you know look look, a couple of days left and um well by the time you watch this it's Wednesday, obviously I'm recording it late Tuesday night. Obviously match day today. So we've got the Tottenham game um Later on, and then uh, and then we'll be back on Thursday with our transfer deadline day show. So um, yeah, all interesting. Really busy week at West Ham, and then of course the Chelsea game. It doesn't stop. It don't stop over here at Hammers Chat. I will catch up. I was going to say I'll catch up with you tomorrow. I won't. I'll catch up with you later on today for the build-up show to the Tottenham game.